Hey, hey, welcome back to Astronate Playing Bloodborne. It is so good to be here. Today I am going to be trying out a brand new microphone. We are upgrading our setup and uh, it seems like a good idea to go ahead and give that a shout on a little solo stream. Alright, so today we are primarily going to be doing a little bit of cleanup uh, before advancing the world state and heading into the woods. So I don't, I don't remember. I, I don't remember if I already gave the brooch back to Gascoigne's daughter. But we are going to be advancing that quest line first. We're also going to be taking an opportunity to uh, send a few people over to the clinic. And this is definitely not the most optimal route to take to get to Gascoigne's daughter, but I don't know. I just feel like walking through Yarnum. I just, I love this level so much. As far as design goes, it's a really good opening level. Now, I've already talked a bit about how the game usually does not do a great job teaching you its, uh, you know, its rules, its strategies, its tactics. But as far as Central Yarnum goes, I mean, we could have a lot worse. Excuse the fuck out of you. Now in early game runs, I very rarely come to this area because for some reason, this area in particular always gets me when I'm at the very start of my run. And this leads right up to the bridge. So that's kind of neat. Hi, buddy. Yeah, all right, so I have already given her that. Hi, buddy. Which means we are going to be actually doing the next stage of that little uh, that little subquest. So we already gave her the brooch that we found on her mom's dead body. Her dad had gone crazy and uh, did a little bit of murder as a treat. So upon learning that, she was distraught and has uh, gone somewhere else. God, I love this bridge. Goodbye. That will never get old.
All right, now. See, this is an example, I think, of environmental storytelling done right. Because it, it's not, it's not a main plot. It's not relevant to the main plot. It's world building and tells you a little mini story if you pay attention. I'm not a huge fan of environmental storytelling for a main plot. But this is where I think it shines. So you kill the pig and... you get the Red Messenger Ribbon. Let's take a look at the Red Messenger Ribbon. If I can remember where it's going to be. Here it is. A red ribbon that messengers are oddly fond of. Thick, pungent red was drawn from the organs of some unfortunate victim. I have no idea what that sound is. My apologies. Strange choice indeed, but perhaps the messenger is wearing the accessory constitutes a form of mourning. So that giant pig ate someone. Now, it's pretty obvious who that someone is, but let's pretend this is a first playthrough and we're not super great at putting together context clues right away. That ribbon only ever procs when you give the brooch to the child. The child is gone. Now, we need to reset the, uh, the world, let it cycle. So we're going to take this opportunity to uh, kill two birds with one stone. Hey, Bella, how are you? Good to see you. Well, it's really good to have you for those 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a little bit of cleanup, and then I'm going to be taking Vicar Amelia. I don't think I'm going to be doing a uh, long stream today, and I don't think I'm going to be really talking about anything super heavy or important today. Uh, today is one of my favorite things to do with Bloodborne. I'm just in the mood to play Bloodborne. I love this game. I love the atmosphere. I love the, the combat. I love just about everything about it. It's one of my comfort games. Whenever, whenever I'm just not feeling super great, it's good to pop it in and just go hunting for a little bit. Oh, well, hello. Splendid. Let me ask you a small kindness. Now, at the beginning of the game, Yosefka is uh, telling us we need to go away. Then, if you find any survivors, and tell please don't bother Yosefka's her. Tell Yosefka's clinic. Upon my Hippocratic oath, if they are yet human, I will look after them, perhaps even cure them. This sickness, these beasts, they are not to be feared. So there's something up here. This time the night is long. I may be trapped here, but I should do something to help. Not even a little suspicious. 
I trust you implicitly. I offer a reward for your cooperation. Tempted? Well, off you go. I'm sure it's fine. So now we're going to make a little mad dash back to, uh, back to Gascoigne's house. Also, I think it's kind of funny that upon her Hippocratic oath, she swears not to harm them. Which means, canonically, Hippocrates was a person. Which means, canonically, this may take place just on Earth. So that's neat. Hmm. Alright, I think I might have to advance the world state before I do any of that. So, we're going to do a little bit more cleanup. Now, in this game, after you kill certain bosses, the world changes. Which means, it's always a good idea to take care of any side quest you can, as far as you can, before fighting bosses. Um, Vicar Amelia changes the world state, as long as you examine the skull. And then killing Rom will change the world state as well. So what is it in a much better way in there? Well, what do you know? An outside. Well, don't just stand there. Don't you have work? Go split some throats. Get... Rude. Alright, let's see. What else are we doing today? As far as I know, that's about all I can do right now. Here, anyway. We'll go ahead and get the, uh... Well, hey, buddy, where'd you come from? We'll go ahead and get the, uh, suspicious man and send him to uh, Yosethra's clinic. Then we actually will do him last because uh, thanks to a tip on one of my previous scream, or streams, I am going to, I'm going to send the nun to uh, Yosefka as well. I'm not a huge fan of how they've set up some of these locations on the graveyard or gravestones. Because the, uh. So the graveyard of the Dark Beast is. You can first access that. In fact, you can only access that, really, through this area, the Hypogen Jail. Oh, I forgot. You're awesome and better at this than I am. Ow, ow, ow. Never, never could parry that.
Yeah, bagmen are uh, bad news bears. All right, so in order to get her to talk to you, you have to be wearing some church garb. So, I think one piece will do it. If not. Hey, what's up? Oh, your garb, the healing church. Yep. You've got to save me. Oh, Something like that. Thank you, dear saint. You're welcome. I have no words to express my relief. I take cash, credit. You can take this, at least. It's sure to please an upstanding member of the church like you. Oh, thank you so you much. You know, that's something I never really noticed before, is she gives you a madman's knowledge. Thank you, sir. I was seized on the street. But there were many others, but they've been taken. And I've heard moans. Echoing in the distance. Now, where did she get since. that? So, then the streets are bad. Perhaps it isn't. Do you know some? Oh, I'll say I pray for success on your kind hunter. No word on how she actually gets there. It can be assumed that she knows where I'm talking about, but there's no way out of here except by the lamp. Zero out of ten. Worst game. <laughs> yeah, I take cash, credit, Venmo, or the untold secrets of the Eldritch Truth. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. How could I forget? Oh, happens every time. And... And... Alright, where to now? Now we're going back to Cathedral Ward. But yeah, so the Graveyard of the Dark Beast is here. Accessed by going to the Hypogen Jail, which is here. Some of these layouts are confusing. Also, minor nitpick, and I don't remember if I mentioned this on my first stream. The first time I played this game, first time I came to the Hunter's Dream, I had no idea what the hell to do. I had no idea I had to go to this headstone. The game doesn't do anything to tell you. Like, I, I can't stress enough, I love this game, but... Guys, you gotta teach your player how to play it. It's Once you know what's going on, you're fine. You're completely fine. But... I can't count the number of times I had to look up guides just for basic ways to play the game. It does not explain co-op very well. I had to look up a guide for that. Doesn't explain the headstones, and while yeah, I probably could have found it just by dicking around a bit, I shouldn't have to for a fundamental mechanic of the game. You know, surprisingly, that is one thing I didn't have to look up. Um, at that point, I had already figured out... Um, this game likes to obscure what it's actually trying to say to you in item descriptions. So, looking at the eye of a blood drunk hunter, I, I took a... My first guess was to uh, use the same amygdala as the other teleport. And then my second guess was to do the one that actually gets you to the DLC. Yeah, 
Yeah, see, and that's the thing. You have to be good or you're not going to be able to understand anything in this game. And that's not a problem on you or anyone who's bad at metaphors. That's a problem on the game. Now, the counter argument would be, well, the game is not for everyone. Um, and if you aren't good at it, you need to get good at it or get gone. And you know what? Fuck that. I... God, I hate the, the elitist bullshit of... You either play the game on hard or on a hard setting or whatever. Or you're awful. See, but that's the thing. Dark Souls does a much better job than Bloodborne does at it. So I never actually beat the first Dark Souls because the Bed of Chaos fight was so bullshit that it, it kind of enraged me and spoiled the whole experience for me. But I never had a I never had trouble figuring out what I was doing in Dark Souls. Bloodborne was made well after the fact. See, and I've beat Dark Souls 2, and I've beat Dark Souls 3. Um, Dark Souls 3, I managed to accidentally get the Usurper ending. And that was my first and so far only playthrough. I, I may revisit it at some point. But I never had trouble following what was up in Dark Souls 2 or Dark Souls 3. Or Dark Souls 1 even if I never beat it because I'm terrible at video games. But Bloodborne... I argue Bloodborne is the best game they've put out. Now, I haven't played Sekiro, and eventually I might. But... From what I've played, Dark Souls is, or Bloodborne is the best they've ever done. So it's kind of frustrating that it's also the most inaccessible. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the punishing games. You, you're not from around here, are you? I, I swear, I was on like my fifth or sixth playthrough before I ever learned that this guy actually was here. You what? What you think? And step away from our carpet. See, the reason I don't really want to play. The reason I don't want to play uh, Sekiro. What's this too? I heard you talk. Well, she's a dead boy. <laughs> Alright, so this guy doesn't trust a goddamn word you say. Uh, Alright, what crafty lies if you think I'm an easy mark? Yeah. So, wherever you tell him to go, he'll go to the opposite place. Huh. Yeah, sorry. Too sharp for that bollocks. I know a super stiff outside huh. So now he's going to show up in Yosefka's clinic later. So, but yeah... Bloodborne is amazing, and I'm pretty sure I've done everything I can. So, we are going to do a password. Today's password is CAKE, C-A-K-E, because I want some. I'm going to take a brief tour of Central Yarnum in case anybody wants to jump in, or not Central Yarnum, the Cathedral Ward. And then I'm just going to go for Amelia. Tangentially related, but kind of still on the topic of accessibility. I don't understand why people think adding an easy mode to Dark Souls or Bloodborne or whatever is going to be a bad thing. Now... I, I know the arguments, and some of them are fairly good arguments. Uh, the 
developers intended the game a certain way, it's best experience in that way, all of that. Uh, you might screw up the balance of the game, etc., etc. But here's the thing. Not everyone can meet the developer on that level. Not everyone can do that. Either, either for skill reason or for time. Hell, I, I am a grown-ass adult. I do not have time. I, I work a full-time job. I've got other projects going on. I don't have time to throw myself at it again and again and again and again and again. Adding an easy mode, say to Bloodborne here, and here's really where it, I think, where the heart of it gets lost. Adding an easy mode to Bloodborne or Dark Souls is not going to ruin the experience of anyone who still wants to play it in the developer intended way. I would play it in the developer intended way. Yeah, see, adding that as an accessibility option would be fantastic. My thing is, and always has been, I, I want as many people as possible to enjoy the things I enjoy. It's, it's why I, I, I don't like the whole, oh, it was cool and then it went mainstream. I think it's fucking cool that things go mainstream. That's more people I can enjoy the thing with. That's more people I can connect to about it. I thrive on connection between people. And if adding a if soft game is going to get more people to enjoy one of the things that I enjoy, hell yeah, why would that be a bad thing? I just want people to enjoy things. And not everyone enjoys things in the same way. So while well, yes, I do see the merit in an argument. Uh, uh, excellent. Good to have you, Garlactic. Uh, password is cake and my bell is ringing. While I do see the merit in an argument, developer intended experience was crafted. And as a creative type, I, I get that. God, do I get that. It between the creator and the audience. And I've spoken before about how environmental storytelling kind of expects the audience to come to the developer and work for the story instead of having the developer give the story or tell the story. Well, I think the, I think that also applies to this particular debate. It's expecting the audience to meet the developer's level without consideration to whether or not that's feasible. Most people, sure, probably can. Or even just some people probably can. But the author, the, the creator, is not infallible. I'm sure I'm going to rant about death of the author at some point. But I, you know, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I think a term that could apply is the death of the developer. The developer's interpretation of their own creation is not the only word in it. It's not the only valid way of doing it. <sighs> Death of the developer. You know, there might actually be something to that. I'm sure someone else has already come up with it, but I don't know. I'm going to have to give that some more thought, formulate some more, more opinions on that. Alright, what do we got? Mm, can't 
buff. And no fire. All right. Well, this is going to be interesting. Probably going to be fine. Let us pray. Let us wish to partake in communion. Let us partake in communion. Oh. Well, all right, that's perfectly fine. Though, if uh, if Vicar Amelia slaps me, uh, we will we'll get you in for round two. I don't think I don't think the Blades of Mercy are a great weapon against bosses like Amelia. But they're not terrible. I would definitely be better served with, say, you know, like a, a serrated weapon or something I could slap some fire on. But but look, I, I have seen people do blood level four runs where they do nothing but use their fist. And at that point, I don't feel like I've got any excuse. Yeah, I got to get right up, which is exactly where her threat range is. Take that. Haha, <laughs> nailed it. Whoa, that was unexpected, but I'll take it. You know, I might have to take back what I said about this not being a good weapon here. Ow. Rally potential is really shit, though. Okay, so I just spent all of that being talking about how these are not great weapons for this fight. And she didn't even get a chance to go into her healing phase. So, and this is important, maybe I'm a dumbass. And here we have an instance of one of the only direct story bits we get from actually Absolutely. playing the game. I've come to bid you farewell. Oh, I know, I know. And it's a really I'm interesting now story. To me. No, but you will never listen. I tell you, I will not forget our adage. We are born of the blood. Made men by the blood. Yeah, it is still cryptic as heck. By the blood. Our eyes are yet to open. Which, in Fear a better told story, blood. it's a great story, but it's told really poorly. In a better I told story, leave. that amount of cryptic would be interesting. Because in order for something to really engage you with the mystery of it, you have to have a working knowledge and a good understanding of the status quo of why this thing stands out as different or interesting or mysterious. But within the context of Bloodborne, everything is equally mysterious and cryptic. For example, the only indication that we got that that adage is important is a note that you may not ever see because it's kind of out of the way. The adage of the old church. The, the guy with the password. And I've skipped the guy with the password up until now. But let's make an assumption that you didn't before the moon rises, before the night comes. 
there's this guy who asked for a password, and you don't know what the fuck he's on about. You don't know what the what the password is, or even why you need a password. So you go and defeat Vicar Amelia, and you hear the adage, fear the old blood. Great. Well, unless you found that note earlier, you still don't know that that's the password. Now, there is something to be said about rewarding players for exploring, but there's also something to be said about telling your goddamn story. See, and the reason it pisses me off is because Bloodborne is really damn close to a masterpiece. The password. But shit like that is just not great. Because if I had never found that note, I never would have thought to come back here. I never would have put the pieces together that, oh shit, that is the password, because this note told me that it's the adage of the old church that's the password. Yeah, yeah, I have. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> he, he says some really crazy shit. I, I swear, at some point it sounds like he's having a conversation with, with somebody. Hey, buddy. I love that they put the pebble there to lure you into falling for this little pincer attack. Alright. Should be an executioner up ahead. Yep, here you go. Alright, I should probably put some shit on my on my weapon. Got some more gems I can put on my weapon. Ah, uh, Forbidden Woods. I would love this level conceptually, and I hate it in practice. I still get lost in the uh, second half of this place. I am a blood drunk hunter. Beckons hunters to the hunter's nightmare. A disformed creature will whisk you away outside Odin Chapel. Uh, not yet. We are going to repair it, though, just, just in case. I mean, we're still doing fine, but... Alright, how are we looking? So far, we're actually as good as we can be right now. All right, let's go to Snake Hell. I'm gonna have my bell ringing just in case, but I think I'm just going to open up the first passageway and uh, call that a day.
Oh, Gar, is that you? Hey, good to see you, my dude. I've got a... I know I've got a, uh, a covering for the mic on the way, and I might build a little isolation box for it. Because right now, we are still just streaming in our living room. We don't have a dedicated streaming space. So I'll be working on the technicals of that. Yeah, to kind of follow up on something that you were saying earlier, Gar. Um, Blades of Mercy are great for PvP, but as a... I'm going to amend that as well with... They are probably the best weapon in the game for single combat with anything. Any humanoid enemy that you have one-on-one... -on -one, uh, Blades of Mercy is going to just wreck him. Yeah, in a game that prioritizes speed and aggression, a weapon that capitalizes on speed and aggression is... Uh, just unfair. Now, because I have Gar in my world, we can't go and uh, explore the little hidden cave. But next time. You know not the value you possess. But more's the pity. The hours of the night are many, and the beasts more than I can count. A veritable hunt unending. Not even death offers solace, and the blood imbibes you. <laughs> A most frightful fate. Oh my. Now this guy is completely different than anyone else we've ever talked to in one of these houses, because he actually seems to know what's going on. I'm sure it's fine and that there's nothing more to look into here. The gift of the Godhead will grant you strength. Yes, I'm unquestionably certain. Not even death offers solace. And the blood invites <laughs> you. Seek you the, the gift of... I love when those doors just swing open. Somehow, magically. Man, Gar's been busy. I helped. You know, actually I might I might pump some stats into Arcane. Not only because it gives me a better uh, damage spread on 
the uh, Blades of Mercy. But because the Hunter's Tools are so much fun, Quick, quick Step Blades of Mercy is uh, kind of unfair. Now, I know the game wants me to throw fire down into the oil river where the corpses are, but I have a counter-argument to that. And I said, this is way more fun. Alright, so there is a shortcut here that is kind of useless, to be honest. I always open it because why the hell not? There's some stuff along the way, mostly Madman's knowledge. Oh, I was wrong. I was wrong again. I refer you back to my I'm a dumbass comment. But in my entire history playing this game, I have never used that shortcut. Which I probably should, because I've died a lot at this part. I hope at some point I get invaded just so I can show you guys how bad I am at this. Because the answer is a lot. I am a lot bad at PvP. Here comes Snakehead Jimmy. I don't like Snakehead Jimmy. Nobody likes Snakehead Jimmy. What was I just saying?
Hey, Gar, buddy, if you're with me, come rendezvous with me. I'm over at the uh, first. I'm over at the first uh, elevator. Alright, so this just got a lot more interesting. We are going to stick together and uh, hopefully not get our asses handed to us. Now, chances are pretty high if this guy is playing smart. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. Maybe I know someone was being summoned, but I don't know if there's still an invader in the world. But just to be on the safe side, we're going to stick together here. Now, this is where I was going to end the stream was opening up that door, but. I think it's pretty bad form just to jump out when there's an invader. And I think there's an invader. So, we're gonna keep going. Give this guy a chance to, uh, fuck me up. Now, if he is smart, or if she is smart, what's gonna happen is the invader will try to catch us off guard while we're engaged with a big fight. And we're going into snake hell. Which is full of big fights. So I actually have two ball pythons as pets. Uh, one of them is a royal and one of them is a banana. So this area kind of makes me sad. Plenty of goodies in uh in this area of the woods though. Nice. I always hate it in video games when you have a ledge that is clearly easily climbable, like this, and I just, my character refuses. I go toe-to-toe -to -toe with godlike beasts, and I can't climb a tiny ledge. Oh, I hear a big boy.
Hey, you want to do a plunging attack with me? And Geronimo. I love it. Now I think the deep sea, please correct me if I'm wrong, Gar. It's been a while, but I think the deep sea provides frenzy resistance, which is gonna be super important later. Poor pig. Yeah, I'm starting to think maybe there isn't actually an invader in the world, which makes me sad. All right, now. One of the things that I only put together on, I think my third, fourth playthrough, is the significance of where this area is. Now there's a hidden path earlier in the woods near where the dogs come and get you. That's a good reveal. That will lead you up to Yosefka's clinic, where the imposter Yosefka is running experiments, and anyone you send to the imposter Yosefka will turn into one of these. Now, it always kind of bothered me. Why are these things here? This makes very little sense. Until I realized this area is right near where Yosefka's clinic is. In fact, Yosefka's clinic is pretty much right above this. Which means this is where she dumps the rejects. Or where the rejects wander to. You're getting some good blood gems off of these guys, though. I don't know if we're going to be able to really make use of them, but yeah, right up there. In fact, I bet, I bet I can actually see it. Right up in there is where Yosefka's clinic is going to be. I wonder if it's possible to see it from here. Mm, unless I'm missing something, I don't see it. But you know what? Grass. 
Yeah, that would have been a that would have been a cool detail though. If you could see it from here. Oh well, say levy. And I love little bits like that, that hint at what's going on. Again, that's environmental storytelling done really well because you can put together the pieces and get a deeper understanding of the story as opposed to you have to put together the pieces to get any understanding of the story. A lot of people that I've talked to who have played this game go through the entire game without ever knowing what the hell they're doing or why they're doing it, more importantly. All right, now, if I'm not mistaken, somebody challenged me to take on the Beast Man. So we're going to go do that. Now the good news is, is even when I aggro this guy, you are not going to be able to actually help me. So this is going to be a complete solo try. And I'll be honest with you lads, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. Ah, thank you. Yes, cannon is good. Um, we'll get it on the way back, though. So the game is clearly telegraphing that it wants me to use poison knives. I don't know if I'm gonna. But screw it, I'm gonna. What the hell? It should be fun. I've never actually used them on this guy. I've only ever used the cheese on this guy, the going in the doorway. So here it is. We find this guy. There's some dead people, and he appears to be eating one of them. Whoa! Blimey, don't scare me like that. On a night like this, I took you for a monster. Oh, thank the stars. You're fairly normal. Was it you who put down that awful beast? Ooh, that thing had me trembling, frozen in my boots. And then you came along. Hi. Well, if you're a hunter, then would you know of any safe havens? So if you send him to Odin Chapel, he will slowly but surely eat everybody. And if you send him to Yosefka's clinic, well, you know. Oh, yeah, of course not. I should have known. This whole place is falling apart once again. So this guy is it's clearly the curse suspicious. Of but very well spoken. And that's going to come into play in a moment. Because I actually think this guy is a really good example of a failure to realize the game's potential. And here's why. Have you got a screw loose? Or is it your animal intuition? You hunters have got more blood on your hands. So this guy is a chalice dungeon boss. And I don't even know if I can parry him. Um, well, I can honestly say that's never happened to me before. 
I wonder, can I target him from down here? What happens if I... Can I even hit him with poison knives? Oh my god. Come on, come on down here, buddy. Wow. I could literally just sit here and poison him to death. But that's, that's not fun. Die. 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 How about I don't, though? I don't, well, I don't wanna. And I'm thinking this down here is that awful beast he was talking about. Yeah, this guy is really susceptible to poison knives. Like, I think it's like one or two, and he's just... Alright. Let's do this again. And that's challenge complete there. Even though I'll, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> oh man, that would have been so hilarious if I just died from that fall. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm actually not really satisfied with that fight. Hey Kai, good to see you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not too thrilled with how that fight went down because the the poison knives did most of the work and that I don't know okay so when I run into him in the chalice dungeons I will make sure to not use the poison knives no I didn't get the cannon I uh, I fell which is why I'm coming back up But yeah, that's one of the things that I, I genuinely think the game does wrong. And it's how they handle that little section. Because they introduce a really, really interesting dynamic and a really interesting idea. Namely, holy shit. That, uh, that beast is not mindless. He can talk, he can reason, and he clearly has opinions about us and the hunters and the dynamic between hunter and beast. And I hope you I hope you liked that exploration of that because it's all of it we get in the game. The closest thing that we come to it is uh, Jira, the the hunter who is protecting the beasts. And if you befriend him, he says, "Yeah, they used to be human." But even still, that is the only beast in the game that exhibits rational thought but it's talking like it's talking like that's not the case and I really feel like they could have done a whole lot to uh, to expand on that as it is they've blurred the lines between uh, hunter and beast and challenged the notions that we have about people turning into mindless beasts Sure, it'd be nice if they explored that story a little bit better. Here, piggy, piggy, piggy. <laughs> you played yourself.
All right, we're gonna head up here to get our last little rune, and then we are gonna be done with Snake Hell, and good riddance to it. Uh, yep. A lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of my Dungeon Master stuff was lifted wholesale from places like Bloodborne. All right. Now, I don't want to call Miyazaki a lazy game designer, but I do want to point out that Ring wraiths are not a. Uh, these are just ring wraiths. But they have like katanas, so they're like weeb wraiths. throw snakes at me. Thanks, Gar. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna slap the, uh, little magnifying glass thing here because I'm going to be using it a bit. So here's something that uh, here's something that I actually saw when I was playing with a meta of mine and that is these tombstones here. These, these gravestones. Now you can't read the inscriptions on them but if you look at them Look at them close. Those are little sluggy boys. Which is a fun little design. Also, uh, I think it's tryptophobia with the fear of holes. I guess tryptophobia warning. So here it is. We have the, the latticed hole design. And we have the sluggy boys. And both of those are associated strongly with the old gods. In fact, when you find a, a Pearl Slug or the Augur of Eberitas, it explicitly calls it out as uh, this is uh, this is a familiar of a great old one. So the fact that these monuments, these tombstones, are covered in both of those things makes me think that maybe they are the tombstones of the gods. And that would be really neat. The Shadows of Yarnum, on the other hand, I have no idea still what the fuck those guys are on about. I have no idea why they're there. Why would they be guarding Bergenworth? Also, who and what are they? Because we, we see them later in the Nightmare of Mensis as just regular-ass enemies, but the Nightmare of Mensis is not... I don't know. It, it, it's... That's a part of the story that I don't, I, I haven't been able to put together yet. Alright. Alright, so that is fucking snake hell. And that went a lot quicker and smoother than I thought it would. Uh, the Shadows of Yarnum, the boss that we're talk the boss that we just took down. I have no idea what they're doing there. 
I have no idea what their relevance to the lore is. I have no idea why uh, the shadows, why something associated with Queen Yarnum would be guarding Bergenworth. Now, I understand in The Nightmare of Mensis because Queen Yarnum shows up in The Nightmare of Mensis, but what does that have to do with Bergenworth? I don't know. Uh, I'll, I might look it up later, but one of the things that I don't like to do is just look up other ideas about what the story is if I can't figure it out on my own. Yeah, it could be Tumerians, because uh, a katana is a is a, in in this little universe. It's it's a a canehurst weapon. You know, actually, no. Hang on, let's start. You know, I might be onto something there. I'll I'll think about it later. But for now, that is going to end this episode. I want to thank you all for joining me. Uh, it's been great to have you. I don't know when I'm going to be doing my next one, but eh, sometime soon. All right, let's see here. Hang on just a sec. Let me check something. This was once a word. Okay, you don't say anything here. different. All right, thank you guys for joining me. It's been great to have you. Uh, I will see you next time. I love you all, and there is nothing you can do about it. Have a fantastic rest of your day.